formatting in Microsoft Word 2010. Microsoft Word is a word processor that helps you to create documents with a professional outlook. It not only provides the facility to type and edit the text, but also offers features to enhance the overall appearance of the text. In our previous class, we have learned various basic editing and formatting tools like inserting, moving, copying, changing the font, text alignments, etc. In this video, you will enhance your skill by learning some advanced features of editing and formatting. Format Painter The Format Painter tool is used when you want to copy and apply the formatting of one section of text or graphic such as color, font style and size, and border style to another section of text or graphic. Let us see how to use Format Painter. Now, you need to select the text whose formatting you want to copy. I want to copy the formatting, formatting of this text to computer. So what I will do is, select this text, click on the Format Painter under the Home tab and you will see the pointer changes into brush shape and just click on the text whose formatting you need to change. You can see the same formatting features of Microsoft Word has appeared to computer text. The same you can follow for the graphic also. Let us see how to do this. I'll draw two shapes. Now, let us say I want to copy these features to this text so select this sorry this picture select this picture click on format painter and click on the another shape you can see that the color of the second object is changed now let me tell you a tip to copy the formatting effect to multiple sections of text you need to double click on the format painter button and apply the effect over the selected text or graphics. Let us try. Now let us try this same formatting effect to all this text. So what you will do is select this text, double click on format painter and just go on clicking where you want to change the font. That's all. Applying superscript and subscript. The superscript option places the selected text slightly above the baseline. On the contrary, the subscript option places the selected text slightly below the baseline and makes it appear smaller than the rest of the text. Type M2 and select 2. Now we'll select this 2. Click on the font dialog box launcher on the home tab. This is your font dialog box launcher. Select superscript. This is superscript. This is subscript. If you select superscript, you will notice that two will be placed above the baseline. In the same way, if you select this two again and if you click on this subscript, you will notice that the 2 is placed below the baseline. Select the text on which you want to apply the shadow effect. 
click on the text effect button in the font group on the home tab it displays various text effect styles select the shadow option and choose the required shadow effect from the displayed button you can choose any kind of shadow and observe that a little shadow has appeared over here header and footer header and footer is used to place some information on the top and at the bottom of every page respectively you can include the title chapter's heading date page number author's name etc in this section now we will see how to apply header and footer the header and footer buttons are found in the header and footer group on the insert tab click on the header button it will display a list of options select the edit header option the word will display editable header at the top of each page an additional tab named design under the header and footer tools will appear on the ribbon click on the header box then type the text you want to display for example microsoft word let us change the size of it i'll keep it in the middle press the tab key twice now click anywhere on the document you will observe that the header has placed on the document it gets placed on each and every page of the microsoft word document by default this is second document third document in the same way when you want to apply footer go to insert tab click on footer option it will display a list in that click on edit footer here you can add page number or anything as per your requirement let us add page number 1 change the size now click anywhere on the document and you will observe that in the footer section page number has appeared and it will be appear to all the pages serial number wise 1 like this inserting column and column break when you type in microsoft word by default the text is displayed in a single column style or in a paragraph style if you wish to format the document in newspaper style that is column style word enables you to create a document in two or more columns the easiest way to create a multi column document is to click on the page layout tab and click on the columns button select the text suppose i am selecting this now click on the column button under the page layout tab a drop down menu displays different styles in which columns can be created select the number of columns you would like to insert in your document if you want to customize the columns then click on the more columns the column dialog box will appear as shown define the desired settings and click on okay the same way after adding columns you might have noticed that some of the columns are not as balanced as you would like them to be one solution to this problem is to add a column break it will force the end of the column and move the text to the beginning of new column to do this place the cursor 
Place the cursor before the text where you want to insert a column break. Click on the breaks button on the page layout tab. Select the column option from the drop down menu. You will observe that the text following the column break will begin in the next column. Click here, click in the break, click on column. Observe. To apply page break, click on the text where you want the page to end. Suppose I'll click here. Now click on the page layout tab and select the break button in the page setup group. Click on the page option from the drop down menu. The page will change after the point at which the page break is inserted. You can see. The same way we can insert the line break also. A line break can be placed anywhere in the document. Place the cursor where you want to add the line break and simply click the enter key. Like this. The rest of the text will move to the next line. To check the line break in a document, click on show or hide symbol in the paragraph group on the home tab. Setting margins. Margin refers to the amount of blank space between the edges of the page and the document text. Microsoft Word allows you to set the margins on all the four sides of the document that is top, bottom, left and right. The default margin are set at 1 inches from top and bottom and 1 inches from the left and right edges of the page. Now let us see how to change the margins. To change the margins by using ruler bars ruler bars are this is horizontal ruler and this is vertical ruler so to change the left or right margins point to the margin boundary at the horizontal ruler when the pointer changes to double headed arrow drag the margin boundary as per your need in this way in the same way to change the top or bottom mar margins point to the margin boundary on the vertical ruler and when the pointer changes to double headed arrow drag the margin boundary as required. We can also set the margin by using page layout tab. Click on the page layout tab. Select margin option. By default normal margin is selected. Select the custom margin option. The page setup dialog box will appear. Select the margin tab. Type the values for top, bottom, left and right margins and then click on the spin boxes to set the margins. You need to just click OK. You can observe that the margin setting is changed as per the requirement. Setting page orientation and paper size. The page orientation property sets the printing direction of text. The default orientation of the paper is set to portrait in which the document is printed lengthwise. When we choose the landscape orientation, the document is printed widthwise. Also in Microsoft Word, you can work with different sizes of paper through the available selections depend on the type of printer you use. To change the paper orientation, the steps are select the page layout tab, click on the orientation button, choose the landscape, by default you will see it is portrait, choose the landscape orientation from the drop down list and observe the changes. This is landscape, this is portrait. In the same way we can select the page size also, 
to set the page size you need to click on page layout then go to size option you will see number of sizes of papers here you can select any paper size depending on the printer you use this is letter size by default it is A4 A3 size A5 size this way we can change the paper size working with tabs the most common way to indent the text is to use the tab key it is used to move the cursor at the specific spaces in a document by default tab stops are set at every 0.5 inches you can set the tab stops along the ruler according to your requirement when you press the tab key the cursor automatically jumps to the next tab tab can also be created using leaders line the leaders insert dots or dashes in the space leading up to the tab stop to set the tab stop click on the dialog box launcher button in the paragraph group of page layout option now click on the tab option which is present on the lower left of the dialog box the tab dialog box will appears on the screen type the tab position example 1.25 inches and click on ok now press the tab key the cursor will jump to the next position where you have set the tab stop indenting text indentation determines the amount of spacing between the text that is section of text or paragraph and the page margins indenting is also used to set a section of text apart from the rest of the body to draw the lead readers attention indentation feature is used to move the complete paragraph or the first line of the paragraph to a specific position either from the left or right margins select the text to be indented click on the increase indent button which is present in the home tab the selected text shifts half inch away from the left margin click on the decrease indent button to move the text half inch closer to the left margin you can observe it decrease indent increase indent